I'm the genius Asian. Welcome to the genius family. These are the seven different mask tests I will compare and show you which one you should use. One, breathability test. Two, particles passing through test. Three, water test. Four, static electricity test. Five, light passing through test. Six, blow out the flame test. Seven, burning test. Breathability test. I make some cuts on Kleenex to form strips like this. Blow through the mask to see how high the strips will swing. I invented this test so that people will not use materials that are too thick, which would lead to trying to breathe via the unfiltered gaps on the sides. Check out our other video to reduce the gaps on the sides of your masks. Particles passing through. We proposed this test in our previous video. This is the only test you can perform at home that really tests the function of a filter or mask. Even though we can't completely control the suction or particle size, we can use this method to compare relative effectiveness of different materials. Some viewers still think the vacuum has too high a pressure. So here I will show a test with lower pressure. Drill a hole in the cap of an empty water bottle and cut a large hole on the bottom of the bottle. For thin filter materials, such as a paper napkin, I will place the filter material on the top and then thread the cap on. I put some cocoa powder through the hole in the cap. Cover the entire bottle top, including the cap, with your mouth and then blow strongly. Check whether the cocoa powder has traveled through to the back of the paper napkin using a magnifying glass if necessary. For thicker filtering materials, such as this towel, put the towel on top of a dark cloth. Put some flour on the filter, covering an area a bit smaller than the size of the hole on the bottom of the bottle. Hold the bottle with the towel and dark cloth on the bottom end and blow strongly. Check to see if there is flour on the dark cloth. If in doubt, double check with our high pressure particle passing test. I do want to warn you not to inhale powder into your lungs, whether accidentally or on purpose to test pressure. Exhaling or using a vacuum cleaner already covers the pressure range. Humans can exhale one to two PSI pressure, while a vacuum cleaner's overheating protection may stop at four PSI, although the maximum theoretical pressure for any suction is 14.7 PSI. In a previous video, we demonstrated a water test because when the droplets land on your mask, the mask needs to prevent them from seeping through. The difference between a medical N95 mask and an industrial N95 mask is that the medical version can repel water. Last time, we just poured water onto filter materials. This time, we will have a more controlled experiment so that we can compare different materials more accurately. Punch a hole in some cardboard. Place this towel as our filter material between this piece of cardboard and a second piece of cardboard. Hold a spray bottle filled with water at a fixed distance from the cardboard. Aim the water stream at the hole. Be sure that it is squirting a stream, not a mist. Then observe whether or not there is water on the second layer of cardboard. See, in this instance, there is water on the cardboard behind the filter. Then we place our paper napkin between the cardboard layers. Position the squirt bottle at the same distance away from the cardboard, aiming at the hole, and spray. See, this napkin is a little wet, but there is no water on the cardboard behind the filter. If both of the materials allow water to pass through to the plate, then you need to try again, spraying from a further distance. Or, if your first trial did not allow any water through, then you need to move to a shorter distance away to try again. In this way, you can find the point where one material blocks water, but the other does not. And so you know which material does a better job at blocking the water. Static electricity test. See how if I hold the mask next to a hair or a small piece of toilet paper, the hair will fly to the mask? The principle, which is used in choosing materials for some masks, is that if a filter material has an electrostatic charge, oppositely charged particles that pass into the mask will be attracted to the charge and will stick there rather than continuing through. Although the N95 standards do not give specifications for this feature, it can be desirable since it can capture very small particles, even if the holes in the filter are bigger. However, while an electrostatic charge may improve a filter if other factors are equal, 
It does not substitute for the particle passing test. Look at this polyester fabric. See, it does attract hair or paper. There is no way fabric with these large holes can be a good filter material. Light passing through test. In our previous video, we showed this light test. You can also simply place the mask under the sun or your cell phone flashlight and see how dense the fabric is. This test is so easy, you can simply show someone that a particular filter is too thin and too porous. Blow out the flame test. This black mask is quite porous. You can even see the holes, and I can blow the flame out. The claim is, if you can blow out the flame from a lighter wearing the mask, then it is an ineffective mask. Otherwise, it is a good one. So we should not use this black mask according to the results of this test. This blue mask is a surgical mask that has passed the particle test. I can also blow the flame out. Since both masks failed the test, you can't use this test to pick out the masks that are not up to standard. What about filters which pass the test? Take this vent register, for example. With the register open, it fails the test. But with the register half open, it can pass the test simply because the air is being directed at a different angle. So this passing result is meaningless because we know the holes are too big. You can easily exhale while putting your hand in front of the mask. Your hand is a pretty good sensor to detect how strong the airflow is, so why bother with a flame? So I would use the easier light test instead of the flame test. Burning test. The idea of this one is that if the mask is of good quality, the mask's middle layer, the filtering layer, will melt and disintegrate instead of catching fire. I cut a mask. You can see there are three layers, outward facing, middle, and inward facing, which is next to your face. According to those promoting this test, if the middle layer melts, this is a good mask. Yes, this mask's middle layer, which acts as the filter, melted. However, the outward facing layer, as well as the inward facing layers, also melted. So if either of these were used as the middle layer in a low quality mask, this test will fail to detect that. This has the same problem as some of the other tests. The N95 standards have not measured this property. It is quite possible our current commonly used materials will melt and will not burn, but that does not prove that these materials are effective at filtering small particles. This property does not indicate particle passing. For example, this metal mesh can't be burned, but it certainly will not block small particles if it is the middle layer of a mask. In conclusion, among the seven tests, the one measuring particles passing through is the most important one. This is the one the material needs to pass because this is the one that actually tests the job the filter is supposed to perform. The second most important test is the water test if you will be in a situation where droplets are a concern. The electrostatic test is desirable if you can get that kind of material for your DIY project. Also, you should verify your mask's seal and breathability so that you can avoid breathing through gaps. If your material can't pass all four tests, then you just need to choose the best you have based on both breathability and filter efficiency. The other home tests may tell you something about the materials, but cannot verify the effectiveness of the materials as filters. Share this with people who you know that need it. Leave your own genius tips in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm the genius Asian. Subscribe for more useful videos.